Okay, hello there. I don't think I have ever done a Q&A video. So I thought today, why not just ask you guys to ask me questions and I'll answer them. That's how Q&As work. So I have a ton of y'all's questions on my phone currently. Let's just get into y'all's questions. So the first question comes from a friend of mine, Top Pops. If any, what's a Ralph McQuarrie concept you wish made it into the films? Oh gosh, that's a good question. Shall we consult my handy dandy Ralph McQuarrie thing? <laughs> because I have one that comes to mind. So this is my signed Ralph McQuarrie art set. One of the early designs for a film poster for Star Wars had a bearded Han Solo. I don't know if you can tell, but Han Solo had a beard. I feel like we were robbed of Han Solo with a beard. What you do must bring lots of happiness, opportunities, and fulfillment, but has there also been any moments where you have felt lonely or down with how busy or hectic life can be? That's a loaded question. <laughs> okay, let's get real. You know what? Let's get real. I feel lonely a lot. I'm gonna be completely honest. A lot of what I do is me just filming alone, sitting in my room, filming a video like this. But when I go to like Disneyland alone or like different places alone and I have you guys come up to me and like ask me for a picture or tell me that you love my videos, like it means the world. And I, I mean it. Y'all support means a lot. As far as like how busy or hectic life can be, I like a busy and hectic life. I don't want a boring and not hectic life. I want my life to be exciting. So I think the hecticness and busyness is always good. What is the biggest lesson that the lockdown slash pandemic has taught you? For me, it is to check in on your people as much as possible. Mental and emotional health is so much more important than we really think about since we're always so busy on the move. I feel like a lot of what I learned came after the pandemic. I guess like looking back on it, I kind of learned a lot from just seeing how much we are missing out on and comparing it to now when things are a little bit better. During the pandemic is kind of when I started to make content and make TikToks and make YouTube videos. I kind of fell in love with like just doing what I love, you know what I mean? So I think that my biggest lesson for the pandemic was if you love something and if you're passionate about it, go for it. Because if you don't go for what you're passionate for or what you love or even who you love, it's gonna take a toll on you. And no matter what, you're not gonna feel as dedicated as if it were like, making videos like for me making videos is one of my passions star wars is one of my passions i love storytelling i love making people laugh i love making people happy by watching my videos so going for what you love is number one and as far as mental and emotional health goes i agree it's so much more important than uh people think it is after the pandemic just to get a little bit deep um i dealt with something really hard. I recently went through a really tough emotional patch in my life for months. Um, since July of last year, July of 2022, um, I felt like I was in a really dark place. I dealt with a person who was really, really close to me um, pass away and it took a toll to say the least on my mental health. It, it really, was a hard thing for us to deal with. It kind of led me down this path of like kind of the grieving process and I just felt lost. I felt I felt like I didn't have anybody. I felt like I I was just helpless. Like I felt like I I had no power. You know, I felt like I I was just unmotivated. I was lost. The things I felt so much love and passion for just kind of faded. I didn't really feel happy anymore. I feel like nothing really made me happy, you know? And <laughs> whenever I moved out here in July, the first thing I did was go see a comedy show. And since then I've just been seeing so many comedy shows. I feel like that's the number one thing that kind of ripped me out of a dark place was doing what I love. And that was seeing comedy shows. But speaking of mental health and being ripped out of a dark place, I wanna thank Audible for sponsoring today's video. Being stuck in a dark place is something that 
a lot of people have to deal with, you could be dealing with it currently, but Audible is there to help you. They have a vast library of mental health books, so many titles focused on mental health awareness, truly just such a powerful library of self-help titles. And I really couldn't recommend Audible enough. I've listened to so many of their audiobooks and they have to help me out of a dark place. So I highly, highly recommend checking them out. Not only does Audible have amazing mental health awareness books, but they also offer an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre, from bestsellers and new releases, to memoirs, to biographies, to wellness, business, like so much more. The Audible app also makes it so easy to listen anywhere at any time, whether you're working out, going on a walk, going on a bike ride, you decide. New members can try it free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash Carly K or text Carly K to 500 500 to try Audible free for 30 days. Just to mention really quickly, one I've been listening to on Audible has been Becoming Supernatural by Joe Dispenza. So I highly recommend listening to that one. Again, thank you to Audible for sponsoring this video and let's get back to the questions. Julian R asked, what was your step-by-step -step process of getting where you are today? like your intro to Star Wars, into lightsaber spinning, into YouTube, etc. Let me make this quick because I could do an entire 15 minute video on this, but I'm gonna try to be as quick as possible. Ever since I was young, um, my parents and my uncle all got me into Star Wars. I used to go over to my cousin's house. We would play Battlefront together. I grew up around uh, these giant life-size Star Wars statues. And I was wondering like, what the heck is this like giant alien looking weird eye creature was Jar Jar Binks. And just, I, I mean, I was raised around like a life-size Boba Fett and a life-size R2-D2 and just like collectibles. My parents got me like an R2-D2 tank top shirt that I would always wear. I had like R2-D2 shoes. Um, I had a Darth Vader lightsaber that I actually still have. This is my Vader lightsaber from when I was a child. I had this like a million years ago. This is my original Darth Vader lightsaber. No, <laughs> lightsaber. My cousins and I had these, they had this closet where it was just a bunch of those original Force FX lightsabers. And they were so broken because all we would do was fight with them. We would just like run around their house fighting with these Force FX lightsabers, just hitting them as hard as we possibly could. They were all broken, but we loved them. I loved the movies. I loved the games. As far as getting into lightsaber spinning, everyone asks me, did you do color guard? I have never done color guard in my life. Couldn't tell you anything about it, but I've done martial arts for a very long time, since the age of nine. I did Taekwondo, Krav Maga, kickboxing, and Kali. It's like the Filipino martial art of stick fighting, basically. A lot of that is how I learned to dual wield lightsabers. So a lot of what you see in Ahsoka is Kali inspired. So any of like the, <laughs> it's all Kali. Yeah, so one day during the pandemic, I was like scrolling through TikTok and I saw like some people spinning lightsabers and I was like, that's really cool. There were just so many cool people like just doing lightsaber stuff. And I was like, I would love to do that. So what I ended up doing was I borrowed a couple Disney lightsabers from a friend of mine. I bought them to the beach and I started spinning them on the beach. Like I would a collie stick or a bow staff or a sword and put some aesthetic music over it. And it popped off on TikTok. And I was like, this is so dope. And then it just like, it went viral. It, it literally went viral and it began this huge wave of like lightsaber stuff. I loved it. And then um, I had always wanted to do YouTube my entire life. So basically I grew from TikTok to doing YouTube. And now I just, I've fallen in love with making videos and editing and talking. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, that's how I, that's basically a brief synopsis of how I got into this. If you read any of the Legends books or played any of the non-canon games, what character would you want to become canon? Starkiller, 
easily Starkiller. I would love for him to become canon. Do you think they should bring back Starkiller? P.S. Love that you're hosting ICCC. Very proud. Aw, thank you. Yeah, I'm hosting uh, the Imperial Commissary Collectors Convention May 26th through the 28th. You should totally come. I'm gonna make a full video about it soon, but I'm gonna be the guest host. We're gonna have people like Ian McDermott. We're gonna have the entire cast of Rebels. We're gonna have Charlie Cox and some other amazing people that I will be announcing very shortly. Actually, by the time I upload this, we announced Vincent D'Onofrio. So, a lot of crazy stuff. Very excited for that con. Do I think they should bring back Starkiller? Yes, and bring him back live action, Sam. I know you're watching this. You're probably not, but Sam, please come back as Starkiller. We beg. We're begging, please. What's your favorite Star Wars model that you've painted? That's a good question. This is my Imperial Assault Rancor. I spent so much time on this guy. I dedicated too many days to this. But as you can see, I tried to put so much detail into him. Even in his teeth and his mouth, he has spit. I did that with glue. I love this guy. He's definitely my favorite. I was actually thinking of doing a whole video on my Star Wars um, model painting stuff, but it's so nerdy. It's so nerdy. If Galaxy's Edge was to create a new ride or attraction, what would excite you the most for them to do? A pod racing ride. Who would you love to cosplay from the Scream franchise? This is a good question. How'd you know I love Scream? I want to cosplay Jill Roberts or Kirby or... Oh, Sam. Samantha Carpenter from the new movies. But I want to wear her like Billy Loomis ghost face get up. Question, um, what's your favorite lightsaber in your collection? It is definitely my custom Starfall Sabers lightsaber. Um, it has my name in Orobesh. What other worlds are you into apart from Star Wars? For example, Game of Thrones, The Witcher, Walking Dead, etc. I love Harry Potter. I adore Harry Potter. I love horror movies, so Scream and The Shining. As far as shows, what We Do in the Shadows is like my favorite show of all time. I love What We Do in the Shadows. So yeah, I'm into those worlds. What was the first thing that really caught your eye about Star Wars and what made you think, wow, I wanna do this? I think, I feel like the thing that really made me want to dedicate more of my life to wanting to be in Star Wars. It was watching Lauren Mary Kim and Ray Park do the motion capture for Maul versus Ahsoka in season seven of The Clone Wars. I, I was watching their um, behind the scenes video and just fell in love with the process. So I, I would say that definitely. Which Star Wars character do you think is most like yourself? Um, Max Rebo. Where would you like to go in the Star Wars galaxy? Oh, um, I would want to go to, oh, what's the planet? It was in the book of Boba Fett. It was like the ring world. It looked like the halo um, ring world. I would want to go there or Coruscant. Coruscant at night though. I feel like that would be really cool. How would you rank the Star Wars movies? Empire Strikes Back, A New Hope, Return of the Jedi, Revenge of the Sith, Phantom Menace, Force Awakens, Attack of the Clones, I'm sorry, Rise of Skywalker, no, uh, Last Jedi, Rise of Skywalker. That's it. Since you have done YouTube for a while now, how many videos have you scrapped and never posted? I have a couple that come to mind. There are a few that I've scrapped um, or just never got around to edit. I have a Sobby's Workshop video that I filmed a while ago probably like a year and a half ago that never got around to being edited. I also have a video of when I saw Megan Fox at Galaxy's Edge and I have a Frankenstein's vlog. Yeah, there's a couple. There's definitely a couple. Favorite fan encounter? That's a good question. There are so many encounters that I've, I mean, I love all of them. They're all 
so amazing always. There's everyone's always so nice. I think the one that immediately comes to mind was when I was at Galaxy's Edge in Disney World for a lightsaber meetup. I was kind of standing in the first order area and a little girl and her mom came up to me and her mom was like, she recognized you, she watches your videos. And I was like, oh my God, this is so sweet. And her mom was like, it's her birthday. And I was like, oh my God, happy birthday. And I was like trying to hold back tears because this was so sweet. This girl was probably like six, seven years old and she was dressed as Ray. And I told her I love her Ray outfit and I hope she had an amazing birthday. And that really meant a lot. I thought it was so sweet. Are you going to San Diego Comic-Con? I would love to go to San Diego Comic-Con. Sure. I'll try, <laughs> I'll definitely try to. Heading to Star Wars Celebration Japan 2025. Again, I would love to, um, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. It's gonna be a while until 2025. Do you aspire to be an actress? In Star Wars, for example, what other movies would you be interested in if you had the choice? This is a great question. I've worked on a lot of projects. Most have been theater. I went to school for acting. I've done improv courses. I love acting. It's my number one passion in life. Um, it's what I wanna do, um, always. And I would love to be in Star Wars. I mean, that's the goal, you know? Um, yeah. What other movies would you be interested in if you had the choice? I mean, I would love to do thriller, drama, horror movies. So anything that is like gritty and dark, even voice acting would be fun. I'm kind of down for anything. If you could bring any animated character into live action, who would it be? Bastilla Sean and let me play her. <laughs> any of the characters from Knights of the Old Republic would be really cool. And Starkiller, I'll do one more. Are there any other sci-fi franchises that you like? I hate to admit it. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this little Q&A video. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day, night, wherever you are, and may the force be with you, always. Bye.